What's up guys, this is Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys the tail command. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to show you guys the Linux tail command. And this command can be found on all Unix-like operating systems. Uh, so that includes Linux, you know, all diff different distributions. Uh, it's been around for a long time. The, t the tail command reads a file and output the last part of it, hence the name tail. So it basically pulls the tail end of a file. The tail command can also monitor data streams and open files displaying new information as it is being written. And just to give an example, is useful as a way to monitor uh, system log files in real time. So you can open up a file using tails and as logs are written to the log file, it'll display them on the screen and it'll keep keep showing new log events as they happen on the system in real time. So in this video, I wanted to show you guys the information on, te on the tails command, as well as give you a few examples on how to actually use it. So let's get started on that. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is go down and show you guys the man page of the tail command. So if we go man and then tail, and like I said, this is an old command. Some commands that are super old don't have a man page because it's not needed. It's uh, it's a command that is well known and has been around for, for years. So sometimes they don't have man pages, but tell tells does at least in the distribution I'm using. And I am I'm using uh, Arch Linux. But later on, when I do the demonstration, I'm going to show you on a Ubuntu server, my actual production server, how this command can be used to view logs as well as live events that happen within those logs. So anyway, here's the here's the man page for it. So tails outputs the last port of files. Here's the synopsis. So the tails, so tail and then option and then the file that you want to read. And by default, the tail command prints out the last 10 lines of each file to standard output. And that's what happens when you run the command without using any of the options. And it says with more than one file, proceed each with a header given the file name. So it does that as well. So you can look at multiple files. You could print out log files and it'll print out the 10 lines and then it'll show you the uh, header with the actual file name. Uh, as well as the logs underneath it. And so here we go. I wanted to show you guys a few of the examples. You have the dash C, which shows uh, bytes, uh, dash F uh, to follow. So it outputs appended data as the file grows. So that's the actual option that updates as it goes. So once you run with the dash F option, you'll see when logs are written to the actual log file or events are written to the log file, it'll keep expanding and growing that file uh, within the output of the tail command. And then you can also specify the number of lines that you want to see by using a dash in option. And I'll show you guys the examples in a, in a few minutes. And so, yeah, if, if you want to check out the rest of the options, just open up the man page. It should be in your version of Linux. You can check it out for yourself and go through and read all the options and understand what they actually do. So let's get started with the demonstration. So let's quit right fast. Let's press Q. Okay, so let me SSH into my production server and I just want to show you a specific file on there and it is actually used by an application I did a video a while back on which is fail to ban. So I want to look at the authentication logs and this log file is actually the file that's tracked by fail to ban in order to ban people that are trying to brute force my SSH connection. And if you want to check out how to install fail to ban, just check out the link that'll pop up in a second. But let's SSH into my server. Let me clear this out right fast. And let's look at the first example of how to actually run the fail to ban command, which this displays the last 10 log files. And the way you run it is basically tails and then the file name. So I'm gonna just put the whole path so you guys can see where this authentication file is located, but it's var log and then auth 
dot log and let's press enter and as you can see it even it shows that I just connected this is the authentication log so anytime somebody attempts to authenticate with the server or actually authenticates with the server it lists out that process within the log file so you can see is the accepted public key for Josh from my laptop that's my laptop's IP and any port and the RSA key that was accepted as well as as you can see, it says SSHD session open for user Josh new session 84. So anyway, it lists out uh, the whole process of authentication with the server. So that's a good example. And it shows the last 10 logs to the file. So let's say we want to look at a specific amount of logs that have came in. So if we type that same command out, but let's use the dash in option and dash in, you know, obviously means a specific amount of lines that you want to see from the log file so you have to specify that so let's start off with let's say we want to look at 25 lines within the log file so if we press enter there that'll list out more you know information you can see somebody was trying to actually brute force my server i think um i'm not sure but this is what um fail to ban actually looks for it looks for the ssh connections so and they're specified under this column right here uh, so you can filter out specific things by using the by piping grep and you can filter out certain things within it along with the tail tail command so that's all i want to show you right there but also let me show you the f option and this allows you to follow just look at it like follow but it's actually just monitoring that file and updating as it goes like i stated earlier so let me clear it first and let's go on and type in using the f option and if we put dash f right here in front of it it'll list out the last 10 files and as you can see the connection to that file is still open so as things happen and I'm going to force it to, I'm going to force some logs to happen. I'm going to, I'm going to create another SSH connection within another terminal. And that way it'll update that file for us. So if we go SSH and I know you guys can't see that, but I'm, I'm basically SSH into the server again, uh, from another terminal and press enter. And as you can see, that whole process happened and you can see the log file updated. So every time that log file is updated, it'll keep adding to that file. So any updates to that file, it'll display them within this, within tail while using the dash F option. So that's pretty cool. That's one way of actually monitoring log files yourself. So let's go down and stop this. And the way to stop it, you just type control C and that will stop the monitoring of that actual file. And also guys, let me go down and show you guys how to search within this file. So let's take something specific and I'm going to do it just like, just like fail to ban does. What it does is it looks for SSHD uh, connections when it actually looks at this log file. Cause as you can see is other types of logs that are put in here. Uh, but we only want to focus on SSHD so we can grab that by typing in, let's say uh, I'm going to use that same command dash f and then let's put a pipe at the end and then let's type grep and then space and then we want to put in sshd so i'll just type it out sshd and press enter and as you can see sshd is kind of highlighted when you're in a filter uh that's because of my color settings that i have on the terminal but you can see that's what i filtered on so it's only pulling sshd connections and then this will update as you go so let me let me invoke some more logs to the file for SSHD. I'm going to exit out this other terminal that I have. And you'll see that the session was closed and it updated that file. And let's go on and connect again. That way you guys can see that it'll, it'll update again. So that's pretty cool. So that's basically a brief overview of how the tail command actually works. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave comments down in the, in the comment boxes below. And check out my other video on fail to ban where I do a, a overview of how to set up fail to ban on your server so you can prevent people from brute forcing your server. 
And when I first set up Failed to Ban uh, years ago on my server that I had set up, I heavily used the tail command because I thought it was interesting just looking at the logs that Failed to Ban was using in order to ban IP addresses. And as you can see, this log file does look at uh, logs, the IP addresses for where the connection is trying to come from. So when people try to brute force your server, that IP address is logged within the authentication file. And it's logged as like a failed authentication attempt. And if that happens too many times on that from that IP address, that means it looks at it as somebody's trying to brute force your server. So fail to ban works with the firewall, which is IP tables and creates rules to block any type of connections from that IP address again. So just check out that other video. I go in depth on how to actually set up fail to ban and you can set this up on your server and check it out as well as play around with the tails command. So if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up and check out my other social media links. I'm on Twitter heavy. I'm also on Instagram. I post pictures every now and then. I'm not as active on there, but I do post up some stuff that I'm working on if you're interested in checking it out. But I hope you guys enjoy your day and keep it tech. Thank you.